Well, that's great. It's one minute past two, so I think we'll get underway. Hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to UCTV Alive for Kids. I'm your host, Dr. Louise Grimmer from the University of Tasmania, and thank you so much for joining us today. UCTV Alive for Kids is an interactive online show that is broadcast every month by Zoom webinar. As a reflection of our institution's recognition of the deep history and culture of this island, the University of Tasmania wishes to acknowledge the traditional owners of Lutruwita, Tasmania, the Palawa people, the original custodians of the land from which we are broadcasting to you today, and we pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Now, your microphone and camera have all been disabled to protect your privacy. And this broadcast is being recorded for later access on the Peter Underwood Centre website and our YouTube channel. And we'll share details about those two things uh, during the question and answer break a bit later on. So I'm really excited to um, introduce today's special guest, this episode is all about weaving and darning, and so we couldn't think of anyone better to come and present on this topic than Marie Backer. Marie is a Senior Environmental Officer at Natural Resources and Environment Tasmania, and she's been on the show a couple of times already last year, and we love Marie so much and she loves us so much that she's come back on again today. Hi, Marie. Thank you for having me on the show, Louise. Oh, very excited. We love having you on the show. Um, now, Marie, we are going to be talking about always reducing waste with you, um, which is a, such an interesting and very important topic. And today you're going to show us how to repair a hole um, in a pair of socks, but we can use that sort of um, skill to repair jumpers and other things. So simple darning techniques. And you're also going to show us how to weave. So why is it important that we learn how to repair things, particularly clothing? Well, everything we use has an environmental impact. Um, the food we eat, the cars we drive, the clothes we wear, you know. Um, and sadly, a lot of things end up in the tip, which is an incredible loss of all the things that went into making that and the energy that was used to drive that around or across the world. Um, and then sometimes those things break, which is very unfortunate, but they end up in, in the rubbish tip. And apparently Australians purchase 27 kilos of clothing per year each, which is astronomical. Oh, isn't it? And apparently 85% ends up in landfill. Now that, might not be exact, but there are a lot of things that do end up sadly in landfill. Often we swap clothes or we send them to the op shop, but nevertheless, there's a whole lot that even they can't deal with. They're just mm. overwhelmed. Mm. And sadly, a lot of things are made poorly. So the stitching comes undone. And if it wasn't for being able to sew back on a button or fixing the, you know, the seam, we could use those things over and over. So they have a huge environmental impact. Um, yeah, there's a lot of energy that goes into making clothes, water, dyes, cotton, um, fleece. And then if it's wasted, it's just such a shame. And our tips are filling up and some things generate methane in landfill because it's not in contact with the air and then it becomes methane and that has impact on the climate. So there's a lot to think about. And you might think, oh, I'm just saving a sock, but it can all help. It all adds up, doesn't it? All of these little things that we can do really add up. And I think if as a young person you can learn how to sew and how to darn, how to sew a button back on, how to sew up a seam, that's a skill that is really going to be very important for you as you get older. Um, so I'm really excited about this topic. So look, everyone, we've put together a video. Now, this video was put together with obviously the fabulous talents of Marie, but it was put together by Tess Crellin and she's our producer and director. And I just want to give her a shout out because it's a lovely little video. So um, now as part of the registration for today's webinar, we shared with you a list of some things that you might be able to find at home or in the classroom so that you can follow along. So they were things like some cardboard, some scissors. If you've got a pair of socks that's a bit worn or maybe something with a hole in it and some wool. 
So with those things uh, in front of you or in mind, um, shall we have a look at this great video that you've put together, Marie? Sure. All right, let's do it. Play the video, please, Tess. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been on UCTV before and we made beeswax wraps and we did paper making and every time it's about waste and reducing waste. But today we're going to look at how we can repair things. We can repair jumpers and socks using darning and um, if we get time we can do some weaving as well. So I'll show you how to darn something and some people use a special wooden mushroom to darn their socks but I use an orange or a mandarin. And to darn a sock with a hole in it, we um, put it inside out. And we have a special darning needle, which is not a normal sewing needle, it's quite fat. So anyway, I've got my sock, and you can do crazy colours. I've put my mandarin in it. So what we really want to do is make like a crisscross. Like, imagine if you're looking at clothing, it's kind of crisscross, like a weaving is crisscross. So we're making like a frame and this has already got a few lines going that way. So we're making like a, a grid and I've got orange against orange. But if you can see, I'm going that way a lot. I'm going across and back. I hope you can get a sense of what I'm doing. I'm not just going round, round, round. And the, the orange keeps it tight, okay? So you don't want to have it all bunched up. So we're making like a weaving loom. And if I showed you what we're going to make later, if we have time, it, it's a little simple cardboard weaving loom. So it, it's full of lines going one way, and then we're going to populate it across, okay? So we're holding our sock firm, and we're going along and not straight back and over we're sort of going I think it's like this I might draw it for you later yeah we've got out all going one way now we're going to weave in and out in and out I hope this is not too hard to understand and every sock is different <laughs> You can start to see where I've come across with my kind of sideways stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to go this way. We've done our that way. So I'm just going to pick up and go under. Maybe it is difficult to see because I've got orange thread. Um, pick up one over the next one under over and under and maybe this might be easier if I also show you how to do the weaving on the cardboard loom I'm not sure what sequence you might like to do this in so I'm coming back across and now I'm going to do the opposite where I've gone under this time I'm going to go over I don't know if it's hard to see Holes aren't always round, so it's sort of a bit tricky. But you start to see the pattern. Notice I didn't start with a knot. You don't really want a knot at the end, but you mustn't pull through too hard or you'll lose the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And notice that what I'm using is just old bits of wool. I didn't go to the shop to buy new wool. So you might have someone who's cleaning out all their stuff maybe they're heading off to retirement home or something and they, they don't need to have all this anymore so it might be nice to raid <laughs> mum's cupboard or ask someone if they've got leftovers that's the whole point like we don't need to go and buy new stuff all the time so there that's a start and maybe I can show you my weaving technique now, which is really, really similar. So I made this loom, and again, it's not an absolute science. 
um, imagine I'm starting again and I would make 12 cuts. Now, you could get really scientific about this, but um, I'm going to just guess. If you make a mistake, there's probably more cardboard lying around at school or at home. Okay, and I'm going to do the same up here. If you wanted to, you could really work it out mathematically if you're into rulers and exact, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. Okay, I've got some, I'll use red. What we're going to end up making, by the way, is something like this, which my daughter made at school. And it could be a bookmark or a little thing you put something on. I don't think it'd be a very good mouse mat, but it's cute. All right, so that's what we're going to make, just by weaving. And I'll just cut that bit off. And maybe put it, tuck it in behind. That is the front. And again, you can use all sorts of different colours, all sorts of different pieces. You could weave in, I don't know, sticks or plastic, fibres, anything lying around. You can make one out of bush, weeds, reeds. So again, we're um, under, over, under, over. Okay, so we've got our loom and I've, I've cut the things off as you saw. In um, this particular case, I'm going to tie these two together and into a knot and that will eventually make a tassel. Alternatively, I could go over here and if they're long enough, I could plait them. If you plait them and they're long enough, they'll end up looking like this. Or a simple double knot can end up looking like a little tassel too. So eventually this could be a bookmark and you could have it for someone for Mother's Day or Father's Day or anyone you want to impress. Um, remember that we're using leftover recycled wool and things so that we're avoiding waste to landfill. And it might seem like a tiny thing to do, but remember that all our little um, efforts add up and we can help do something for the environment. I know it's overwhelming sometimes thinking, oh, how do I, you know, do something about climate, but, you know, really believe it. All the small things add up. And there's 8 billion people on the world, in the world, and if we all did something small, these things can make a difference. So, have fun. Thank you. Oh, that was such a great video, Marie. I love that. And I love at the end how you said just, you know, we can all do something small. And if we all did something small, it would make such a huge difference. Right. Well, um, now we're going to take a five minute break, like we usually do, for you to come up with some questions for Marie. Now the questions might be about darning, they might be about weaving, or you might have some general questions about how we can reduce waste in general. You can ask your questions anonymously if you'd like to, but if you want to include the name of your school and your first name, I'll try and give you a shout out. And you need to post your questions into the Q&A function that you can see on your screen. So we'll go away for our five minute break and we'll see you shortly. Oh, welcome back, everyone. Gee, that five minutes goes quickly, doesn't it? 
We've got some great questions here from you, Marie, and I want to give a big shout out to St. Joseph's in Queenstown because they have been oh. very busy on our Q&A question hotline. So shout out to St. Joseph's in Queenstown. So let's get through some of these questions. We haven't got a huge amount of time, but here we go. Um, Sydney has asked you, Marie, how old were you when you first started doing, you know, darning and weaving and all of those sorts of great oh, things? Oh, gosh. Well, I'm old enough that I learnt to sew on my mum's treadle sewing machine. So oh, we wow. had electricity, but you had to kind of um, like turn this thing and rock your foot. And yeah, but I, I've been sewing, gosh, I, maybe I started darning when I was 12 or something. I'm sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> a long time ago. That's all right. Yeah, but I learned to knit when I was young and my children learned to knit in kind of grade one at school. So it's a great thing to learn when you're when yeah. you're at the age of of the people who are watching our our yeah. show today. If you can get into it, yeah. what about um? Here's a question um from Kaylin from St Joseph, who taught you how to weave, Marie. Was it a parent or how did you learn? Um, I I just made it up. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm sorry. You're just always like these sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of worked out what to do. I've also got a big black like window frame and I, the glass has been taken out and I put nails along the top and oh, some yes. baling twine, any of you that live on a farm, and then I wove baling twine in and out. The same process. Oh, yes. People not to draw things in too close, by the way. So yep. keep, keep the width of your loom the same. That's a good and tip. Yeah. Yeah, and I made a mat out of it's plastic rope. So you, like I said before, you can use plastic, you can use like reeds. I did basket making as, as an adult. And in fact, tomorrow um, we're making baskets out of old marine rope. That oh, wow. Pitch. I went to Coney could... Island recently. I know West Coast might get a lot of um, rope drifting in, so that might be interesting to weave marine rope. Wouldn't and I had it? a conversation about how litter affects the animals in the ocean. Oh uh, yes, a that's a, work that's that we make about with waste. And if you're in or around Hobart, follow the Art from Trash um, exhibition because that's awesome. Like they have at least a hundred artworks made out of waste, and it's a way to get people thinking. Oh, I could use that instead of buying new stuff. Hmm. Um, so I haven't answered your question. I don't know, but as you can see, I hope I made it feel really simple. A piece of cardboard, round and round, in and out, have a play. There's some great things you can make. You can make some placemats for um, yes. having your, your dinner on, for example, because that's, yes. perf that's perfect for something that you could weave, isn't it? Yeah, and, of course, um, in medieval times, people would weave their own clothing. Of course, like You couldn't yes. go to the shop and buy things. <laughs> that's right, um, very different. Yeah. Um, Here's a question from Mackenzie. Um, now, I know you did mention this in the in the video, but maybe we'll just ask again. Um, where did you get the recycled wool from? What sorts of places um, can we get wool from? The op shop. The op shop. Oh, the great shop. tip. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, Lots yeah. of people donate wool, don't they? Because you find people might be knitting a jumper and they don't use up all of the balls of wool and then they yep. think, well, I can't, what am I going to do with one or two balls of wool? And they donate it to the op shop. That's yeah. a great idea. Sometimes you can get like a whole bag of all different colours for two dollars. Yes, yeah, that's right. You know, there, there's op shops really are inundated, and they love to move through things. That's so right. I and get most of my things from the op shop. From the op shop, yeah. <laughs> op shops are great, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And um, Marie, here's a question: If you didn't have a, uh, you know, a darning mushroom, which is a, you know, a tool that mm. you can buy for doing darning, perhaps you didn't have a mandarin or an orange around. Can you use something else in place of the of oh. the mandarin that you were using or the orange? A lemon or an apple. So yeah. fruit is good. <laughs> <laughs> I just made it up and it actually smells really nice. Yeah. It would smell beautiful. I hate the um, sound of a needle scratching on wood. Maybe yes, I, yes, I much nicer that. to have, have a nice <laughs> piece of fruit. Here's a question from Chelsea. Now she asked you, Marie, how long at university does it take to get your job? That's wow. a good question. Wow. Yeah, I went to school and I finished year 12. And then I went off to do science, which I loved. 
actually, and I wasn't that great at it, but I stuck at it. And then I ended up working, oh, I ended up doing an extra, extra study because I just loved it so much. And it was so fun. Lots of people my age, you know, were all 18, 19, 20, 21. And then I came to Tasmania, met some more people and did environmental studies as a, it's called a master's. So I went to school, went to uni for three years and you, people get jobs after that, but I kept going because it was so interesting. And I love environmental studies. And I actually studied alternative ways of using waste newspaper. Oh. So I've always had a kind of a waste theme. Yeah, in my, like just my thing, right? Yeah, yeah And I think the, the lesson is follow what you love. It's hard to study what you don't love. Good if advice. You, love, <laughs> you know, if you love animals, study animals. If you like trees, study trees. If you like fish, you know, if you like law or art, do what you love. So it took me about three years at least. And then I worked for the uh, national parks. I was a summer ranger. So I don't know if you have seen the summer rangers, they wander around during summer in the parks, teaching people about the environment. That's great. Um, and then I worked for um, the environment department and I'm still there a long time later. Yes. That was a good question. That's good because sometimes we have guests on the show and we want people want to find out how did you come to be doing the job that you're doing? And, and yes. it's clear that, Marie, you just love it so much. Here's mm. our final question, just because we're so um, short on oh. time today. I know. Great question from um, Alea. I hope I'm saying that right, Alea. Um, she want, uh, Alea wants to know, how long does it take to make the bookmark? So that lovely bookmark that your daughter had made, about how long would it take to make something like that, Marie? Maybe it would take an hour. Oh, that's not long. Mm. Oh, wow. So you could really have something, you know, really great to make in, if you just had an hour. I guess you get faster the sort of the more you get used to doing it. Yeah, and the loom I had, like when my daughter made hers, it was probably longer. And yes. And the tassels were yep. longer. Yes. So what you probably end up with this size that I told you all to do is maybe a coaster size. Yep. But, yeah, you can you can make a loom as long as you like. But, yeah, in and out, in and out. Yeah. But while you're looking outside or whatever. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, maybe an hour. Hmm. All right. Well, look, unfortunately, doesn't that time go so quickly? Um, Marie, before I um, thank you, you've got some interesting news to share about an upcoming event and just some, mm. some news about some teaching materials as well. Yeah, um, if you happen to be near Hobart, the Botanic Gardens next Tuesday, the 25th of October, they're having the teddy bear picnic, teddy bear hunt, and I'm going to be there repairing teddy bears. So if you have any sibling, little siblings that are going, or if you're going, and you have a bear in disrepair who <laughs> <laughs> needs to be fixed, um, I'll be there sewing. Um, but there's a catch. You have to bring evidence of how you've reduced single-use plastic. So you might bring a keep cup or a straw that you've um, that's washable, or um, something in your lunchbox rather than buying it from the canteen, and then you get your bear repaired for free. Yes. Oh, that's and, delightful! Um, for the teachers, I've developed these teaching manuals, which um, it's on a NRE Tasmania website. So we can leave that link at the bottom of this video. Okay. Yes, we'll put up we'll put up that information when we put the video up. That's great. Okay. And Louise, do I have an opportunity to get a hold of these questions and keep answering them? Yes, later? yes, we can yes, we can post some questions up on the um Peter Underwood Centre website. Yeah. And so if there's some questions that we didn't get to today, we'll get Marie right onto them and you can um, have a look at them that way. Well, look, I would like to say a huge thank you to you again, Marie, for coming on the show. Everybody, if you can give Marie a, a virtual round of applause. That Pleasure. was just absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Marie. Now, everyone, our next episode is coming up on Monday, the 21st of November from 2 to 2.30 again. And Beale Gurney from the University of Tasmania is going to come on the show to give us a very quick intro into stop motion. Um, and this is using a free app. Now, this is going to be a very um, easy starting point for teachers and for students and homeschools to try and learn a little bit more about stop motion technology. 
If you missed any of the details during the Q&A break about how to register for UCTV Alive for Kids, you can follow the Peter Underwood Centre on Facebook or follow the UCTV Alive for Kids on Instagram. Thank you, everyone, for taking part in this particular episode. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you next time.